Good morning time, good evening time, good afternoon time, whatever the case may be in your part of the world. So today I'm going to have a brief discussion because I've been getting this question regularly. And uh, because of that, I now know I have to be very careful in what I say and what I do on my channel. Uh, and not just be very careful. I just uh, need to make sure I give explanations of why I do what I do when I do it. Now, a question that's been brought to me quite regularly lately is, should I bypass my BMS? And first of all, if you even have to ask me that question, the answer is no. In fact, the answer is not only no, the answer is fuck no. And I apologize, excuse my French. Now, the reason why it is a fuck no, because if literally you have to ask that question, then there's a hundred percent chance, I'm pretty sure, you do not have to bypass your BMS. The reason for bypassing your BMS in the first place is because your controller is most likely a very high power controller that whatever its current rating is, its DC current rating, not its phase amp current rating, but its DC current rating, how much current it's pulling from the battery is exceeding the current rating of your BMS. Now, most large batteries come with, on the average, 150 amp BMS. There's some that come with 200 amp BMSs. Now, if you have a Sabaton 72150 or a Sabaton 7200, your answer is in that itself. Now, if you have a Sabaton 72200 and you have a 150 amp BMS, then you may want to bypass your BMS, depending on what you have your Sabaton current rating set at. If you're only running 150 amps on your Sabaton, then no, you don't need to bypass it. If you're trying to run 200 amps, then yes, you need to bypass it because you're going to end up blowing your BMS if you pull over that, uh, you know, that current read. Now, that is the only reason you should ever bypass your BMS is that you're stepping up to that next level of power which is so high that your BMS is no longer going to be able to allow the current that you need. And if you're not using a far driver controller or a modified Sabaton unlock 72200 or something that's going to pull over 200 amps, there's no reason for you to even consider bypassing your BMS. Bypassing your BMS just for GP on a Sabaton 72150 is not going to get you any more speed or power because your controller is not requiring any more power. All you're about to do is uh, jeopardize the safety of your battery, yourself, and possibly 
your home and the people that live in it. Another reason why you should not bypass your BMS, if you're asking those type questions, obviously means you have no clue as to what you're really doing when it comes to this e-bike shit. Because when you bypass your BMS, you have to be one of those fellas that is uh, really anal about paying close attention to all your battery stats. You know what I mean? You have to be somebody that's going to be constantly monitoring your battery temperature, the battery current, your battery voltages, all of that. If your guy is just going to get on your bike and ride or put your bike on charge and not monitor any of that carefully and closely, don't even consider bypassing your BMS. And like I said, if you don't have a controller that requires that, there is no need for you to even do that. Okay? Now, I'm not trying to scare anybody by saying if you bypass your BMS that your battery is going to blow up. That's not true. However, uh, it does put you in a category or in in uh, a state that, like I said, you should monitor things very closely because you no longer have the safety of your BMS doing that for you. All right. Now, if you're using a con uh, a charger that is regulated to a certain voltage and current, then you're fine as far as charging your battery. Some guys charge like myself. When I had uh, my other bike, Frank, I had a DIY modified battery system, whereas though I also had a modified charger, meaning it wasn't... Uh, store-bought, regulated, fixed voltage charger, meaning uh, a 72 volt charger is fixed at 84.5 volts. That is the cutoff when that charger reaches that voltage level or when that battery reaches that voltage, that charger will automatically stop charging. So there's two things, and I said this before, there's two things that protect your battery from overcharging. One is the BMS, because the BMS is also going to shut, shut down your charging side of the BMS, and your charger is also going to stop charging. When it reaches that voltage. Now. I had a variable voltage. Variable current. Power supply. That I was charging with. Reason being. Is because I'm a technician. And I know how to. Uh, you know. Dial the, vo the correct voltages in. For whatever size battery. I'm charging. And I know about how much current I should be charging with for whatever size battery. If you're not knowledgeable about any of that, you should not be using a variable voltage or variable amperage power supply, CC power supply. Okay? Because a power supply is going to continue to keep charging no matter where you have it set. If you set it to uh, 84.4 volts or whatever, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop at 84.4 volts, but it's still going to be uh, letting current flow. It's not going to cut off. Even if it's a minute bit of current, 
it's it's going to be current flow instead of cutting itself completely off. It's a power supply. It's unregulated as far as that goes. So, uh, and not only that, because it's variable voltage, you definitely run the risk of overcharging your battery. Because a variable voltage power supply has to be set at the correct voltage. And all types of flukes can happen that can change that. Like uh, you could accidentally bump that little knob. And most of the time those potentiometers are so sensitive that just the slightest little turn on that knob can change it from 84.4 volts to 90.4 volts. And 90.4 volts is going to overcharge that 72 volt battery and that's going to go in the thermal runaway and explode because you have charged those cells way past the the cutoff 4.2 volts. They're up around 5, 6 volts at that point. And they will heat up and explode. So that is why you need to know what you're doing. So, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. I hate to sound, you know, like I'm being a a jerk about it, but I need to be because I got people messaging me and asking me, hey, do I, do I, should I bypass my BMS and have no clue as to why you would be doing that anyway? No, you don't need to bypass your BMS. Only reason I'm bypassing my BMS is because I'm about to use a big ass controller that's going to pull a lot more than 200 amps. Okay? Because I plan to get into the racing aspect of e bike. You know, if you're just a hobbyist and you like going fast and you, you want to race for fun, you know, do what you do. But stay in your lane. Leave that type of stuff for, unfortunately, the guys that bout it, bout it, to do what they do, the big boys that know what the fuck they doing. And that's just the bottom line. You don't know what the hell you're doing, don't start playing with shit you don't understand. And these batteries are very dangerous. Uh, don't ever think that I'm playing down the fact that these lithium batteries aren't dangerous because they are. Uh, I happen to know a little about these things so uh, I'm you know a little better adept at doing certain things but the fact that you have no clue as to why you would do it anyway tells me that you don't know jack about <laughs> any of that and it's best that you stay in your lane all right so that's pretty much it i just wanted to get that out there please don't nobody else message me and ask me should they bypass their bms because uh you should know the answer to that question if you need to bypass it. Okay? Point blank. There it is. Alright, y'all. Take it easy. Take care. Deuces. You know how we do. We O-U-T out of here.